So we're recording now. All right, thanks. So, well, last week we were talking about the OSPO and ISPO panels we have in Remote Lab, and we, we built a visualization trying to so how to represent a metric or to calculate a metric with the data from from Grimoire Lab. And well, I think that was uh, the longest uh, thing we we did last last week. I don't know if uh, you have any doubts about what we did last 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 meeting but anyway we can start reviewing the previous meeting action items so if you have any questions maybe we can start with that and i'm trying to find where are the action items in this document because it's it is really long right now um i do have a question uh andy do you have user and password for the chaos dashboard no i do not Okay, so then Luis, who is in the meeting, may help here. So Luis, hello. Uh, so we were discussing like a couple of weeks ago about giving access to Andy and other people coming to the meeting to the Chaos Dashboard uh, user password. I was discussing this with Matt by email and so on. And well, we are part of the community, so it shouldn't be an issue regarding to GDPR and all of this. Uh, although I would say. Please be careful with the data, although um, even when this is our own data. Well, the point is, uh, in order to make things happen, is to provide access to attendees to these meetings, to, to the dashboard, as we are basically playing and building visualization. So, Luis, you don't have to do this like right now, uh, but it would be good to have if you are coming the next meeting as an action item for you. Is this possible? Yeah, I, I can I can make this happen. Perfect. So Andy, then sorry for the delay with the user and password. Um, Carter and other people attending, Armstrong and others. Uh, please let us know if you would like to have access. Um, so it would be great. The worst scenario I see is basically someone breaks something, but it's small dashboard, so this shouldn't be a big deal to run this again, although this is a headache for Luis. But we all love Luis, so this is not done on purpose. Okay, Alberto, please continue, sorry. So one thing we did last week was postponing the roadmap feedback and discussion for, for this week, but Santi is again not here. She is not able to join today. So I think the action item is going to be postponed for, for the next week again. And then about OSPO and ISPO panels. Well, we have some comments about things we need to, to do in Remote Lab to be able to create the visualization we would like to have for, for this. So, among these, I'd say, well, there are some things we could open as issues in the plugin we are using or we use for build this visualization. And I added a, a new action item at the end uh, after the meeting because I'm not sure about if we should try to get into chaos all the plugins uh, built by David Moreno, our colleague. He built the plugins in, at the university and they are all personal projects, but maybe they could be interesting for the community and we could try to convince him to get them into chaos. I don't know, but well, it's something I would like to discuss anyway. And I think well, that's all. I don't know if you have any opinion over that. I was talking with Alodita from AWS, who is involved with the Open Distro for Elasticsearch project. 
and she is preparing a hackathon and is very interested in, uh, for one, moving the custom visualizations that we have in Kibiter back upstream into Kibana, even if it's just the Kibana on the open distro side. And just as a side note, she's also interested in porting Grimoire Lab to open distro. So ju just as something I thought of just now. So I guess we need to include David Moreno in, in the discussion because he is the author of the plugins. So I will I would like to to know his opinion about it. Certainly, yes. Okay, we, we can try maybe to get David in the next meeting next week, but if that's not possible. We could try to discuss this with him uh, anytime during the week. And from the for the next meeting, we could have or we could try to have an answer for this. I mean, is he interested in having these plugins in some other part, not only in his private repositories? Yes. Okay, so, well, I think the next, mm, next point is the news about, yep. While we're on review action items, I had posted, copy pasted the action items from last week into our meeting minutes and I did not capture what, we, what became of them. So the first one, if you look at the meeting minutes is um, to open an issue in Grimoire Lab about adding links to the chaos metrics in the help sections of each panel. Yep. Is this been done? Has anyone done this? Not on my side. Who would like to open the issue? Who would like to volunteer to take on this action item? I could do it, but I'm a maintainer there, so I'm not sure if I'm the most appropriate to open an issue, but I'll do it. Okay. Um, yes, just a comment here. So the point, uh, so we still have this uh, discussion about the vocabulary to use. So we are talking here, help section of each panel. So by panel, we mean a dashboard, right? We are talking about the different pages with a collection of visualizations on them. And each one of those dashboard slash panels has a help section. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to link from there back to the chaos metric definition. The, the only or the main issue I may, I may, I may see here is that each of the panels may have several metrics. So are you willing to add all of them or kind of this? I don't have an opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So well, it's something then to discuss. That's okay. Yeah, let's open the issue and then discuss on the issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we had an action item for opening an issue to add a logarithmic scale for the X axis. Um, I'm the one who usually opens issues to David Moreno's plugin, so I can do it once again. Thank you. Then we are done with reviewing action items. Guys, shouldn't be Y axis instead of X axis? 
Both of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the next step is. So we have the real previous meeting action items. It's part of this. Uh, regarding to the news for chaos, I remember Alberto, we were discussing about uh, some new panel around. Are you talking about the Gimorla news? Yeah. I think uh, there is a new release and probably Valerio can share some notes about the things we are including in the new one. But we don't have any news about panels. Okay. Uh, so, uh, with respect to what we've been doing uh, uh, this week, uh, more or less we worked on um, new features. So, we worked on sorting up and we are keeping uh, uh, adding support for GraphQL operations. Uh, then uh, in Mordred we have uh, some uh, new things that are pretty nice because uh, uh, it's possible to change the configuration files without stopping uh, the execution of, uh, of the platform. So if you want to uh, load identities, you have just to change the identity file and then Mordred will detect automatically the change and will uh, reload the, the identities. Or for instance, if you want to add more uh, uh, repositories to uh, to the platform to analyze, and then uh, we added the, um, a, a generic mechanism to first of all to blacklist uh, uh, items that are in the upstream uh, that are, um, upstream servers. Sometimes it happens with uh, GitLab, for instance. Some issues are uh, uh, cannot be downloaded, and and these blocks. Uh, the, the collection process. So we worked on this mechanism to have like uh, something generic that can be applied to every backend. So this can be done uh, always through the configuration files. And for the rest, okay, maybe some bug fixing, but uh, no, no more things to report. Thank you very much, Valerio. Um, there was a lot going on and I couldn't keep up with filling in in the minutes. Um, would you, could you add maybe a sentence or two with the highlights? Uh, sure. Excellent, thank you. And we can move on. We don't have to wait for this to be written out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then regarding the roadmap, uh, well, Alberto mentioned that uh, Santi is, uh, so he has this under his action items, so he's not here. So this is still, I guess, uh, being discussed. So no advances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, postpone as we have here. And then the very last item we have is the, how implement the uh, common metrics working group metric, which is the commits, hours, and times. Um, yeah, put his. I can open this. Uh, Georg, maybe as you were one of the participants here, do you mind driving us around this? So actually this started with Matt. Matt pinged me about this metric and I was not at the last common working group meeting. So, mm -hmm. so Matt, this started you... out, yeah, I'm here. So this started mm -hmm. out as um, uh, trying to identify commits that were occurring during business hours. Mm -hmm. All right, so the idea was to try to understand if people are making contributions to projects during an allocated business hour time. And naturally, we started to realize that there's no such thing as business hours mm -hmm. in the world anymore. And framing <laughs> that way um, is kind of silly. <laughs> and if somebody wants to do it locally, that's fine. 
Um, so then really we kind of took it a step up and said, perhaps we could think about this in terms of just commit hours or commit time and commit date. Mm -hmm. And so if you recall, the common group is trying to identify metrics that could be used, you know, kind of across other, other working groups as well. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're usually fairly high level kinds of things. If you recall, like organizational affiliation was one of them from common. So the idea here is how do we, how do we best represent things like dates and times? Okay. So that's it. Okay. I just, I just opened in the, sorry, my screen, the, uh, the Google doc. Yeah. Um, basically the question is what are the dates and timestamps of when contributor activities occur? Mm -hmm. I guess that you, I mean, what it comes to my mind is that we have the author date and the committer date, typically in the Git repositories. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I guess you are making a difference. Um, and then we can translate. So, and then for, for each of those dates, we can translate those dates into, into the time zone you are. Sure. So then you can see either where, what time others are contributing because they are in other time zones. And then for you, basically they are contributing at 3 a.m. But, not, but then at the same time, they have their local time. So I don't know if we have considered all of these or it's still... No, I, no I think those are great points. Um, so we had chosen... So when you mentioned, I guess you have a couple things here. One is you had mentioned author and mm -hmm. commit, committer. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we just said activity dates and times. So we had tried to keep it more general in this regard. And in terms of then locating those dates and times in particular time zones, I guess it would be times, but in particular time zones, sure, that's definitely a kind of a post hoc or an after the fact filter that mm -hmm. could be applied on that information. Mm -hmm. So this was really not even going to the level of detail that I think you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you scroll down, yep. I, ha I tried visualizations further down okay. and if you scroll down even further the second image that is oh, yeah, this one. yep there the table mm -hmm. that is what um i came up with now i cannot see it maybe you can zoom in i cannot okay. read it i can um, i think that doesn't help you <laughs> <laughs> So I tried to replicate the information that was given at the top of the metric. Mm -hmm. And if it's helpful for anyone, I can show you how I created this table in Grimoire Lab um, with author name, repo name, and then time zone. And then there's UTC author, UTC commit, and then commit date. And mm -hmm. from my understanding, the UTC timestamps are well, UTC obviously, and then if you modify them with the time zone, then you get the last column, the commit date. So my first question is, where's the difference between UTC author and UTC commit? Um, I guess did this, oh, am I? Oh no, yeah, I'm not mute. I guess this depends on the, how the development process is done in each community. Uh, for instance, if you go for uh, I know OpenStack, they have uh, you're an author, so you uh, produce a specific commit, and then once this commit is done, you send this for pull request. Well, in this case, they are using chain sets, so you, you send this for a review process. Once this is accepted, you have two dates. In this case, the author date, <coughs> and then the commit date. The commit date is when the bot from the OpenStack Foundation decides, hey, uh, someone told me this is okay to be merged, so then I go and merge. So then we have that time when this, is, this was committed and the other time when this was authored. Um, so this is the usual case we have. Uh, before having proper code review process or a bit uh, not, not done this process through uh, code review tools, uh, perhaps by through Git or even by other tools, by other means, 
uh, this commit activity and author activity was making this difference between author and committers. So instead of having a bot doing this automatically, that was a committer that was there um, doing this by hand. So then you had a, a committer. In the case of the six commits we have here, basically I don't know. So I may need to look for uh, what's going on in UTC author and UTC commit, so and commit date. But the usual process should be this. So maybe maybe Alberto or others can bring some more light here. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any insight on that. I understand what you're saying. We are bringing Darnex into the code. <laughs> so let me stop sharing and opening the the dashboard. Mm -hmm. So I can let me check. I mean, I'll be honest. What what Georg provided, I think, is great mm. for common because I think it addressed time, it addressed date, right? And I mean, you even added kind of a filter, I guess, of time zone. Uh, that there are several. Uh, there's one specific issue I have with this. Mm -hmm. Let me share my screen and mm -hmm. I'll show you my process how I went about doing this. And maybe there's a better way to do it. Is it an issue with setting it up, or is it an issue with the metric? It's an issue with the visualization that I built. Okay. Um. So the first thing I did is I went to discover. Um, in Discover, I looked at the Git index. So I select the Git index. And then I went through all of the available fields. Um, and I found the author name, mm -hmm. which was in the description. And we wanted to have the repo name, which I know there is repo name here. And then I was looking for all kinds of dates fields. And this is when I came across UTC author and UTC commit. Um, I found the time zone field and the, um, the commit time, which is up here, commit date. Um, so this is how I built the table that I took the screenshot of. Um, another way to look at what's available is if I open one of these commits, I can see all of the data that is there for that specific commit. Mm -hmm. So this is how I found the fields that I wanted to use. And then I went in and created a visualization. And here's where my problem started, or this is where my problem is. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about having uh, a vertical bar chart of the Git data where I wanted to see throughout the day, when do people typically contribute? So on the y-axis, I wanted a unique count. So number of commits of um, commit UUID or just UUID. So I think each commit. And then on the x-axis, this is where I wanted a date histogram of, and then I selected here, UTC commit. So removed by time zone, I wanted to know when across the world clock are the commits coming in. I want it on an hourly basis. Mm -hmm. And if I look at this, the visualization is not telling me anything because I still have the date value. So this is across all dates every hour. And so for the visualization that I shared, I just did the last, I think, seven days, which now it becomes more interesting, but still I cannot differentiate between the dates. So I added a bucket where I basically split the series. I think I split the series. No, I don't remember what I did next. I somehow added color in there. Um, oh yeah, by date histogram and then 
again, UTC commit, but this time by day. And now I've got different colors per day. What I really would like is to overlay all of these different days and have the graph show one, all 24 hours of a day. Hmm. So basically remove the date information. Does that, I'm going to stop here. Does that make sense? What I just walked you through? Uh, yeah. I think yeah. yeah. What you are looking for is for, I feel similar to the, this set. We have the, the time zone field, which is just a, a value from one to 12, if I remember well. So you can use that value to write a histogram for, in this case, 24 hours. In the case of time zone, we are doing this for uh, 12 hours. So I guess th this is a similar case. It's having a similar field and then build a visualization exactly in the way we do, or a similar way as uh, we are doing for, for time zone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Danny agrees. Yeah. So, yeah. So I was I was indeed playing while uh, Georg was talking about this, and uh, let let me share my screen, Georg, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. I can stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't a heat map just enough for this? Uh, what I was doing. So probably yes, but then you need the still to limit information by hour. And for this, I was thinking about the unscripted field. Yeah. So. But in, that's what we were discussing in the ticket in GitHub that I passed pasted. Basically, we have the cre remark creation date and we have false information about mm -hmm. author dates or whatever. So basically, we could change the enrichment phase or whatever just to extract from the date, the day of the week and the hour. And then. <laughs> that in a heat map so you can have a week view and for each day of the week when the commits has been done and this is something we already have done in some scriptings and some script fields from time to time i remember doing that for data from meetup for example to check when the typical meetups are happening which hour of the day or which day of the day of the week so you can see when people are registering the most for meetups for example so basically it's the same information here. Yeah. So yeah, but instead of having instead of having to enrich everything, I was looking around and remember this scripted field as I I guess we can create buckets. I don't exactly remember. But if we create for instance this test hour, so the, the way I enter here was let me go back. So we are in this management field. Uh, so we have these options here on the left, then we click on index patterns and then we can create, so we have the fields, all of the fields we have with the type and then we have a scripted, a scripted fields. Um, and for this, we can add a new one. That might be, let me create this. And then the language is painless, which is, this is by default. And then we have the date and then we have this, and then the point is that with this input that we have here, we have this formatted value, but if we remove this information, so basically this is uh, the month, uh, the day, the year, hours, minutes, seconds, blah, blah, blah. So if we start removing things, we can go for this. So then we have this at five, at midnight, at 11 p.m. Um, and for this, this may work. So that was like uh, my proposal here. Uh, so then we can save this and then we would create a, a new script and then we would have this, these strings that are the ones we want to use. So then Georg, you can create new buckets by, by these formatted uh, places. But maybe I'm missing something. So maybe Alberto can help here or what do you think? First, I don't know if you want to build a new scripted field for this, or you just want to format the the current field. I mean, you can use the UTC UTC commit or UTC author, and just format that date to have only hours. Mm -hmm. And if you or 
On the other hand, if you want to use a new field, you need to write the script here and return the the right field. In this case, I think it's right. like doc, uh, bracket, the name of the field uh, with single quotes. Yep. So for instance, author date, we can go for this yeah. as an example. Something like that. That value, think. right? Yeah, I think so. And do you need a name for the field on top? Hmm. Oh, you mean, oh, yeah. oh yeah, like this. Uh, so let's have this here. And then we need to apply a, a specific function, right? I don't know if we know this. Well, in this case, I think you don't need to do anything else because you are returning just a value. So it's so, all work. And then I format this again, right? So I, yeah. Okay. Let me try this. So we would have the hours for this scripted field. Well, the real field you are trying to use, Georg, is UTC. UTC commit. Commit, for instance. OK. Yep. So then we create this. Do you need and to I... be logged in to create a new field? Oh, I'm not logging. Uh... Uh, yes, but I, I don't click on login. Please. Click on. Open Discover in a new tab, for instance. So you open Go a new to the tab? Discover icon on top. Yep. Your top left corner. Mm -hmm. Right click, yeah. And now login from here. Mm -hmm. And you're done. I have copy paste in the chat how Painless has been used to get the day and the hour of a certain action uh, from existing data. Uh, this is playing the tutorial about Grimoire Lab to build meetup panels. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So then, this is what we have in the tutorial. Yeah, but, but if the alternative proposed by Danny works, I'd say it will be better for the hour because it doesn't need any calculation, just uh, formatting. Yeah. So in this case, we have. Okay, let's let's try this first. Uh, so then Georg can play. Maybe Georg, you can go now and check if this is working for you. So then the idea would be, we go to visualize, we create a new one, we create a vertical bar chart which is here, and then we go for git. Git, 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 git. Okay, where are you git? Yeah, here we go. And then we can split this into terms that are our test hours. Yeah, let's have 24 hours. We play. Okay, oh, we have these great hours here. Uh, why do we have this there? Okay, so I need to bucket this. Yeah, I think uh, as, mm, as, I you are, as you are using the terms bucket, it is using these numbers as strings, so it's difficult to know how you are ordering this. In this case, uh, you you are hiding the sorting thing. No, I think it's not. It's you, not you are working. ordering by metric count. This is the first thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's not working because if we are bucketizing information, we should have only one twelve, for instance. But we have two of them. So the problem seems that when you are aggregating by this the terms. Uh, I guess that it's going to work much better Manrique's solution because in this case, this is packetizing by the original string, the original date. Yeah. Hmm. So then that's a problem. So we need to uh, create a specific painless field or as Manrique is uh, suggesting to have uh, uh, this in the enrichment phase. Yeah, you can copy this from the chat yeah. to the, to your field. So just change meetup time by UTC commit. Mm -hmm. Let me check. Mm, so we would go here. And if I remember well, 
it will be better if, well, not for this proof of concept, but in the future, if you need to use variables in, in painless, I think it's better not using them. If you can write just a single line with all the stuff, it's going to be better because this is going to execute once uh, per each document. So in this case, that means you are going to create a, a single variable each time you run the code. If I understood uh, correctly how painless work. So what I mean is instead of returning the variable, mm -hmm. just add get hour to the end of the first line mm -hmm. and get a single line with everything and remove the variable. Yeah, so do you think this should work? Yeah, just remove local date time, hour date equal. You don't need that. You can uh -huh. write return instead. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And now at the end, before the semicolon, you can add dot get hour. And you get the same, but you don't have any variable yeah. in the middle. Well, okay, let's try. Update field. Okay. So then we can try again. So if we go to the visualize thing, we create a new visualization. We go to the vertical chart. We look for our favorite index. And then we want to split this by terms. The term is our test hours. And then we have like 24 minutes. Right? Uh, OK, well, there is, there is an issue here with the script, but it seems this, we may either go for this, or we may go for uh, a suggested by Manrique in the fridge phase. So the, the main difference to make it clear for the people attending is if we go for painless, which is what I've tried right now, and then well, we need to play with this a bit just to fix the bug, is that you, you are calculating this in real time. So each time you are running Kibana, Basically, in, uh, you will get this information each time. So the problem with this is if you keep adding scripted fields, it's going to be at some point heavy for your machine. Uh, if you go to the enrichment phase, that means that that information is already pre-calculated in the, in the big index. So then we would have like another field. And we just simply use that field. Um, and it's like another string or date or term or number. And it's... Uh, it's, it's a different way of calculating this, so that's all. Um, so does, uh, I have a question and, when you were talking about that. Hmm. Is, um, is, you mentioned that the using painless is real time? Yeah. And the, the not painless option is, is it based on kind of archived data? I, I don't mean archived, like old archived, but just not real time data? Uh, not, not, so it's so. not real-time data. The calculation occurs in real-time. The data is always the same. I see. Okay. Mm. I understand. Okay. Mm. And then if we do the enrichment phase, we store the calculated value in the database. I see. Okay. So typically, I would say the recommendation is, so uh, Elasticsearch is pretty good for real time things so it's not uh, it's not used let's say good for procedures as we may have in mysql for instance or mariadb yeah. something that takes time to calculate so uh elastic search is not thought for this so the way they are kind of doing this in kibana is having this uh, calculation in on the fly okay and that's that's all but we were for instance doing some some tries with the onion analysis and doing this in real time. And it takes time because you, you need to bring all of the data, make some conclusions, and then visualize everything. So instead of this, we finally decided in that case, in that case uh, to pre-calculate everything and have everything in a database. Okay. So then we just need to go there. So are the, would the visuals be the same in both of these cases? It's just the way that it's just the process under the hood by which that's done. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but of course there might be differences if there are bugs and you know. But yeah. Okay. In in theory, they're the same. Yeah, because in in 
in Gibana, we are using Painless, which is mm -hmm. kind of JavaScript or similar stuff. Um, while in Elasticsearch, for pre-calculating things, we are using Python. So the way we need to write things, the, the way things are run is, are totally different. OK. So yeah. unless anyone else has a question, I'm going to leave that hanging. See if anyone wants to ask a question right now. I'm good. Yeah. I would be interested to see how we would go about doing the enrichment in Python mm -hmm. and where we would go, what file we would have to touch and what's involved with that. I don't mm -hmm. know if this is something we can cover in 14 minutes. So that's what I'm interested in. Uh, well, more or less. Uh, Manduke, I don't know if you would like to do this as you were talking about the enrichment phase or You mean now look for the git enrichment script and say this is the way where you, we need to change things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can do it or probably Alberto, but just in case you prefer or I don't know. I will spend like 14 minutes looking for the code and look where the, that is. But if you want to try how non-technical people could this, do this, I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> If you know exactly which line of code needs to be touched, I, I just just opening things now. So. Yeah, so, so yeah. I have prepared a, a pull request if you want to see. <laughs> and then you have the technical people working with Gel daily and they know where to do the pull request. <laughs> Go ahead. Can you so share if, the link so we can look at it? If you want to share your screen or I can share mine. Yeah, I'll share the screen. Oh, Valerio shared a link to the pull request in the chat. So just just a quick comment, uh, so I can show you uh, just a small example of how this works. Um, so I can share here in the chat. So you see how how this is. Um, oh, so this is here. Yeah. Um, so there are some more complex, let's say, uh, actions when we are trying to translate information from the raw index to the uh, enriched index. But in short, uh, this is how this works. So we can go for for simply this. Like we are taking this value and then we are copying this value into our new uh, field. So for the calculation for the hours and for this is basically the same approach. So we need to go for the specific date we are interested in, perhaps author date or commit date, or any of this, and then do some calculations. And then what we need is to add to the dictionary, because we are using dictionaries there, the new field, and then it works. But uh, so the pull request, uh, go ahead. So it's this. Oh, well, I can share this. Maybe, uh, Valerio, you want to? Yes, you can share the screen and Valerio can explain, but basically yeah. <clears throat> is what he has added. Uh, yes, basically is, uh, is what you commented, uh, Danny. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I mean, the code of F is basically composed of two main, co um, two main parts, that is the row and mm -hmm. the enrichment. So this part is the, the one about uh, the enrichment. Uh, so we have uh, a method that is uh, uh, get rich item what he does is for each item uh, uh, collected from the row index, it performs some, uh, some calculations. So in this case, what we are adding to the enriched uh, item, so to each item in the um, collected, uh, retrieved from the row index, we are, we are adding this uh, outer day weekday and outer day tower and uh, the same for commit. So then these attributes will be available in the Richard index. And then we can build visualization on top of it. Hmm. So basically the code is, uh, is this. Then uh, the other files you see in the PR is uh, some testing. And then this is the, uh, the schema uh, to explain mm -hmm. what, I mean, to explain the new fields. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and no more than this, basically. So this, uh, yes, what you see here is uh, just a test to check that uh, 
the code is, uh, is working. Mm -hmm. So if you want, I can send the data uh, to, uh, to uh, the chaos uh, uh, Elasticsearch and we can use this data to build uh, the visualization. Yeah, well, there are, there are only 10 minutes. To yeah, finish the call. I, I will just use like uh, the personal repository, for instance. So it should be uh, fast. Or otherwise, uh, we can leave it for uh, the next time. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so probably we can wait for the next meeting. Uh, I mean, don't worry about that. So thank you very much for the, for the pull request, Valerio. And Alberto was mentioning that the uh, to produce a specific uh, visualization, so maybe they can share with you. Um, maybe Alberto, you can go for this. It's the same visualization you had before. I, but I, <laughs> yeah, I think I just fixed the problem with the painless. And mm. The problem was that I pasted the code from the tutorial, and from the tutorial, I think maybe it's not safe. Uh, the tutorial, but maybe it said at some point. The the thing was that the date we were using uh, needed to have uh, the time in millis, so you needed to add millis at the end of the expression to get the right unit, and then it works. So mm -hmm. apart from that, what I did was ordering by term, ascending, and with size 24. As, mm -hmm. as you can say in the x-axis. And probably if, if you want to get the exact count of commits, I mean, removing duplicates, you can use the unit count of hash instead of the count. But, well, I think the result is gonna be pretty much the same in terms of the shape of the, mm. of the chart. Yeah, and the Mandrake mentions that do we have these for days? Then we can have days and hours, so then we can build a, a heat map. Uh, I was looking for an example I did for library, and it was fun to uh, uh, to check what's the pattern uh, doing commits in Spain versus the American office. And it was it was nice because you can see how cultural behaviors also are, are, are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and perhaps an interesting metric here would be. Yeah, but it's kind of similar what you are saying, Manrique, which is this, but then split by time zone, depending where developers are participating at. Then we can see perhaps that there are people moving to the right and people moving to the left. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Georg, hey, we solved this. Yes, this is amazing. I, <laughs> yes, I'm super amazed that we were able to get this done. <laughs> Yeah. and advance the common working group metric. So. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so then we have this... Switch up, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> we have this done for uh, in painless, so on live, on the fly, and then we have this for... Uh, well, probably for the next week, we will have this in the Enrich index. In chaos. Um, yeah. Can you, Georg, are you going to, can you update this in the, that doc? I can, uh, yes. I, so I don't, I did not document the whole, how do we create the painless? Well, that's just for the, I'm thinking the metric. Yeah. I, I was can, talking about the, the common metric, just the visualization. Yeah, I can copy I create a screenshot of the visualization. Okay, because I think this is, I agree, I think this is great. Okay, um, yeah, for the next week, I don't know, so we have six minutes left, so. And other people will start joining for the yeah. other call, so. Uh, should we discuss about next week? Uh, well, we have some action items. Uh, and maybe we can, what do you think about discussing this? The main list, like we can work in this or that specific metric, and then we can give you access to the dashboard. Are you talking to me? Uh, 
to all of you. <laughs> so what was the question? I think somebody just took a screenshot. <laughs> um. Yeah, so uh, the question was, as there are other people coming like in two or three minutes. So if you want to have, so we have some action items. Yeah. So probably a big chunk of the time will be spent again on working on some specific metric, but the metric is still not defined, right? The, the, in the common group? Yeah, it's still kind of a work in progress. So then uh, my, my question is that, what do you think if we move that discussion to the mailing list and then we, oh, that'd be great. That'd we be discuss great. about, okay, this is the metric we are gonna work. Yeah, in fact, I think it's getting to the point now that this visualization is created that it probably could be given to the mailing list, like saying here's the kind of the approximate mm -hmm. aim, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. feel free to join and give feedback. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, um, well, the rest of the people, uh, um, well, Armstrong, Carter, or Luis, and others, if you would like to say anything or comments, feedback, or maybe it's too much time talking us, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to drop off, and then I'll be back on in five minutes. For the <laughs> Well, if there are no more comments, I think we can stop recording. But I don't have the button, so maybe you may you may have. I to. have a, a last comment for okay. for Manrique, and this is just look into the chat because maybe this is the heat map you were asking for. Just to confirm that that is the idea. Let me share my screen. Yeah, that is better. Um, yeah, something like that. Um, I will exchange access because people understand things like in the X axis is days of the week and the Y axis is hours of the day. Um, so basically what you're saying there is that most of the people are contributing around two o'clock to five o'clock. Um, probably nobody is contributing on Wednesday's afternoon. One day everybody is busy. Yeah, something, there's, there's something here. <laughs> I don't know. And Fridays, people are committing a lot on the last minute of Fridays. And you know, never commit in Friday, never deploy on Friday. On Friday. Yeah. And see the practice is here. This is why heat maps are useful. <laughs> hmm. So six and seven are reversed here. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this is because of. This other order by term. Mm. Well, anyway, well, this is Saturday and Sunday, so. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. It's weekend. It's all the same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop the recording now. Thank you, everyone. Perfect. Thank you for your time. Thank you.